Hello everyone, welcome back in today's tutorial on Informatica MDM Services Education Framework. In today's session, we will see next safe API that is Restore. So Restore is the API which is uh, related to the state management or related to the various state of the record. So this API comes with the two classes and it is Restore Request and a restore response. The characteristics of the restore APIs are the restore API changes the state of the record from the deleted to active. So this rec if you want to change the pending to active or pending to deleted this API will not be used. So this is specifically used to restore the record from the deleted state. So whenever you want to make active record from the deleted state, you can use the restore API. If the record is impending, you will not able to make it active using the restore API. If you try to attempt to restore an active or pending record, then you will get error. So make sure if the record is already active, you will not able to make it active. If a record is already in pending state, you will not be able to make it active using the Restore API. After an XREP record is restored, the state of the base object record will be active. Suppose you have the uh, you have the one XREP record and the corresponding survive record at the base object is one. In that case, if you are restoring the XREP record the base object record will be automatically become active. The input parameters are the first parameter is separate object UID. It could be a package or the base object. Then the XREF keys. XREF keys are the entry. Or if you see the word itself is XREF keys. That means multiple keys involved. So XREF key entry selects an XREF record one which we are going to restore. It consists of unique key and the source step who is contributing this record. The, there are various requirements for the base object and the package. So base object must be state enable because delete, pending or active these are the state related attribute. So if you are going to make or if you are going to restore the any record we have to must we have to enable the state for that base object so if you are using if you are going to use the base object for the restoring a record you have to make sure the base object is state enabled for the package it must be based on the uh, base object that has state management enabled the package should be put enabled so these are the requirement for the base object and the package the sample code a sample code will look like this. We have to create object of the restore request using the new operator. Then the create object of the xrep key. And in that xrep key object, we have to store the resource key. Resource key is nothing but the PK source object. Then the system name or the resource key could be the uh, unique key from the source system itself. Then the system name who is contributing this record. Once we populate the XREP key, we can pass the one XREP key or we can pass the multiple XREP key to this restore request. But in this example, we have just created one XREP key. Once we populate the XREP key, then we have to create one more object that is means array list object. In that array list, we can put this XREP key. We can add the multiple XREP keys in this array list. Once we populate that, we can put this array list in the request object. In the request object, we also set the sapping object UID. Here in this example, it is the package. We can set the base object also. We can use the sapping client object and call the process method. We have to pass the request one which I have just populated. So let's go. So let's have a demo on that. So before going to have the demo, let's see what are the prerequisite. So prerequisite we have created one base object the name is purse that is person for the person it has columns such as first name last name and ssn the other properties such as 
the it is state management is enabled by using the timeline attribute of the base object the timeline having the corresponding value is dynamic timeline whenever you choose the dynamic timeline the enable history button automatically gets selected if you want to deselect you can deselect that as well but it is very highly recommended whenever you enable the state your history has to be enabled so that you can have the better history the next thing we have created is we have created package so package is based on the person table so if you want to see so if you see the package is based on the person table and the person table that is post table cb post table is state management enable the other requirement that is state uh, the package is put enable if you see the enable put attribute is a it is selected that means this package is put enable so these are the requirements we have already done let's check out data so in the database we have post data in the cb post table we have the two records the first record is having the roid object 5 and the second is having the roid 2 for these two record out of this the the record with roid object 5 is inactive or it is deleted state the other record which roid object is 2 it is active that is hub state indicator is 1 let's check out the corresponding except records so for the row ID object 5, there is only one record in the X-ray and which is deactivated or the hub state indicator is minus one. The other records having the, uh, the, the row ID object 2 are out of that, they have the four row record out of that two are inactive and two are active. So this is the prerequisite. Let's go and run few of the examples on the restore so what we'll do first we'll delete uh, the record which is having or we will restore the record which is having the hub state indicator minus one and it is only one associated in the x-ray so such record is having the roid object five it's a pk source object is five 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 so let's try to use that record so before going to restore that a record we have to create a class the class name will be restore api it has the main method in the main method we are initiate initializing the separate client object using the separate pool and we are calling the restore method of the restore api uh, class so restore record is a method it is a private method and in that what are the sample code we have seen we have used that we have created the object of the restore request using the new operator then we have created object of xrep keys it has a resource key that is the pk source value then the system name that is crm then we have created array list object and in that array list object we have added the xrep key object then we put that array list inside the request object also we have put the put package then we are calling the process method of the cypher client by passing the request object so these are the things minimum required. Let's run this example. So example is, uh, it is showing that restore request was processed successfully as a response. Let's check out the except record. The earlier state was minus one. Now once it is restored, it should be the plus one. Now you can see the up state indicator become a plus one. Let's check out it's a base object. So base object earlier it was the uh, minus one if you see now it become a plus one because we have restored the object let's try to restore the x-ray from this cluster or the multiple except record so we uh, i will try to restore the record with the pq source one 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 So just pass the PK source value that is as a resource key, source key, and run this program. So request is successful. Let's check out the except record. I'll do the refresh. Now the hub state indicator for the PK source one 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 become one. Now if you run the recalculate BO and the recalculate BVT, the 
out of these three active records, like suppose X row ID X ref one, three, and four, those are the active. So one will uh, out of that the record winning record will be decided based on the trust values and the uh, attributes because if you remember the order of precedence is active pending and deleted so the once we restore the object it will become a prioritizer the precedence will be changed so by this way we can conclude or we can say by using the restore api we can make a deleted record active so we cannot make pending record active using restore api we can only do that nothing but we can restore the deleted record or the deleted set record into the active set record i hope this tutorial will help you to improve your knowledge about the safe api if you have any other questions about the informatica mdm you can mention in the video below and thank you for watching my video have a nice time